So we've just stopped off, we're just outside Kimball Station and very near the Cotswolds uh, Airport and uh, just a short walk from a path we're going to try and take now we should be able to find where the source of the River Thames is. So join us as we uh, trek through the countryside and see if we can find, I think there's a little monument, a little uh, plaque to say where the source and where the river starts. The River Thames is 232 miles, 374 kilometres long, stretching from Gloucestershire east to London and then on to Essex and disappearing into the North Sea. I want to point out straight away that there's a lot of debate as to whether the location we're going to today is the real source. The Environment Agency, Ordnance Survey and other agencies state it's here, but some dispute it and say it's at the Seven Springs further north and east of Gloucester, about 11 miles, 18 kilometers away. Nevertheless, it's a bit of fun to find, and as we were in the Cotswolds, we thought we might like to see this spot. Our location is at Kemble, on the A433, just nearby the aptly named Thames Head Inn. A small lay-by allows for a few cars to park, and we'll climb over the gate and follow the public footpath to a location that was not too easy to find, and where we hope to see the flagstone. So we thought we had found it, but the flagstone marking the spot was nowhere to be seen. We weren't expecting to see any water at this time due to the hot summer drying everything up, but where was the flagstone? This wall and dip in the field clearly has had water flowing through it. Further investigations reveals what looks like a well, so this is certainly part of the early Thames flow. Apparently it's the first time ever it's completely dried up at the source. The image shows what it would be like in this area when not in drought. Checking Google Maps and we are near but it looks like we've headed in the wrong direction at the lay-by, so headed back to cross the road and the footpath on the other side. So the river must come under the ground here into those trees over there. But I think where we were just then is the first point at which the water actually pops up from underground when it gets really flooded. Obviously, right now, it's as dry as a tinderbox here. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, there's nothing for quite a few miles further down, apparently, though it was in the news only a couple of weeks ago. Crossing the road, this is our new route to hopefully see the flagstone. So we've spotted the monument. We're just coming across the farmer's field, which probably she should have walked, walked around the edge of it, but. Uh, Nothing growing and it's dead here at the moment. Sure he won't mind. So there we are, we're approaching it now. You can see the grey stone just ahead of Will in the farmer's field here. And we find it, it's the source of the River Thames. Rather underwhelming, but still fun to find.
says the conservators of the River Thames, 1857 to 1974, this stone was placed here to mark the source of the River Thames. Very occasionally after heavy rain, the water can be seen bubbling up by these rocks, but generally the water is seen further downstream, roughly where we were earlier. There we go, that was the source of the River Thames. Tricky to get to, extremely hot today, but we did it for you memory seekers. Thanks very much for watching. Do subscribe and we'll see you again very soon. Bye bye.